And now, for fans of the most exciting sport in the world, the MMA Live Chat Hour. Listen up and find out what's happening in the world of MMA. Hello and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Hour on which the meeting is Monday, March 10th, 2014. Two days after the UFC Fight Night 37 Christopherson vs. Manoa event. On today's show, we'll be discussing the post UFC Fight Night 37 Christopherson vs. Manoa event, and if time allows, we'll more than likely discuss another topic in the final thoughts segment. On today's show, we have yours truly, Damon Gazelle, and David Petruitt. Thanks for taking part in another show, guys. I appreciate you guys taking the time to be here to discuss the event with me. Go ahead and say hello to anybody that might be listening. Uh, thanks hey for there. having me. Uh, hello to everybody. How's it going, everybody? All right, guys. Thanks again for being here. Let's go ahead and get started. UFC Fight Night 37, Gustafsson versus Manawa. First up, the main event, Alexander Gustafsson versus Jimmy Manawa. This was a big step up in competition for Manoa, and by the looks of how things went, the challenge was a bit too much for him at this point in time. There was lots of pre fight chatter that Manoa might be the man to stop Gustafsson on his feet, and that he may even have a chance to score and do some damage on the ground as well. Uh, I didn't see anything close to that unfold during the bout, as Gustafsson had an excellent game plan going into this fight, and he followed it to a T. Gustafsson fought a smart fight by utilizing his height and reach advantage and fought from the outside and took Manoa down when the opportunity presented itself. Manoa was uh, not much of a challenge for Gustafsson, uh, neither on the feet nor on the ground, in my opinion. And the end for Manoa started with a knee to the chin from a Muay Thai clinch that rocked him and put him on shaky legs. And then uh, Gustafsson followed it up uh, with a few dirty boxing uppercuts that dropped Manoa. And then Gustafsson followed him to the ground, landing a couple more solid hammer fists directly to the head. And then the ref justly stepped in and stopped the action. Manoa tasted defeat for the first time in his MMA career at the hands of Alexander Gustafsson. Alexander Gustafsson won by TKO in round two at one minute and 18 seconds. Comments on this one, guys? I'll defer to you, David, first. All right. Yeah, I was um, really excited for this fight. Um... I thought it was kind of um, a mismatch right from the get-go anyways. But um, I'm glad that Gustafson showed what he showed, that he is that much higher than the competition. Um, yeah, I was just, he absolutely dominated him. I, w I was surprised that they made it out of the first round, to be honest with you. Um, I had friends over that night, and everybody, they, they weren't fight fans. They, they, they enjoy fights, but they don't follow it like I do. And they were looking at the fighters and saying, oh, Manawa, he's going to crush that guy. And I had to explain to them that it's kind of like the other players, the good players that were playing with Michael Jordan at the time. Gustafson is on a whole nother level. Yeah, um, Manawa is, is going to do good in, in the division. Um, but when, you, when your first fight in the UFC is, is coming up against a guy like Alexander Gustafson, I mean, come on. I mean, the dude, uh, in many eyes, uh, should be wearing the, the title belt. Um, he just, he, he looked okay, but he, he, he looked like he had the, the first fight jitters in the UFC. Uh, he wasn't really attempting too much. Um, was easily taken down by Gus and uh, didn't really uh, try too terribly hard to, to get out. I mean, he pretty much just tried to, to hold him in position, hoping for for a stand up almost. It, it seemed like um, Gus didn't really do too terribly much damage on the ground, but you know he did still do some damage. He was mainly going for submissions, uh, from what I remember. And um, then when it came to the second round, he come out. Uh, Gus, that that knee. Oh my God, you you just seen Manoa's head just go go to the side, and you could tell from that point on that that was going to be the end of the fight. And Gus's signature uppercuts, oh, my God. As soon as I seen one of them land, I, I was like, yeah, this fight is definitely over. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then the, 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 the follow-up hammer fist. That 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 just the one when he was on the ground. You seen Manoa's eyes roll back, and it was like, <laughs> "Yep, this is gone." Yeah, with that <laughs> with that Muay Thai clinch and that knee landing dead on the chin, man. I thought that was it. But then they went into the dirty boxing and. Gustafsson landed a couple of nasty uppercuts as well, and boom, that that was all she wrote. Yeah, I think the knee could have could have almost pretty much ended it. I mean, that I I don't think Manoa was in was aware of anything much after that. <laughs> yeah, and he actually had that was his fourth fight in the UFC. He had those. Is it? Was it? Yeah, he actually had those a uh, couple of fights that ended mysteriously. Where I know some people say, well. You know, he beat the guys and knocked them senseless and injured them. But as I recall, he had a couple of fights where the, the stoppages were kind of, you know, odd. Where, you know, there was a leg injury and then one guy quit in the fight. Then there was another one with a doctor stoppage. I, you know, I, I don't recall exactly what went on in those fights. But I knew the, the, the way that they ended in a couple of them at least were, was kind of odd. Now, I... I, I see so many fights. I guess I just haven't. I don't remember any of his fights. Yeah, one was uh, Ryan Jimmo. Yeah, that was the one with the leg injury where he quit, and then uh, there was another one with uh, Ciro Viate. That was the one where Ciro retired in between rounds, I believe it was, or at the end of the round. Huh. Yeah, was it the Diabati? That was uh, that was a leg-related injury as well, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I thought it was yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just I when I I watched the fight about three times, and Gustafson he, he does seem that he has improved since the Jones fight. To be honest with you, um, Manua had been regarded as someone that was going to be the feared striker in the light heavyweight division, and Gustafson did not allow one opening. I don't think it was for a lack of Manoa's attempts to like try to get something started. Gustafson's defense was impeccable. Well, Manoa was throwing some really wild and crazy shots. He really wasn't setting anything up. He was just going for the big bomb. It looked yeah. like to me. Well, I don't. I don't think he could set anything up. Just in with Gustafson's stance and how he was holding himself. Yeah, that height and reach advantage. Oh my was goodness! A, yeah. yeah, that was a major detriment to uh, him having a shot at winning that one. Huge. <laughs> That, and you're right, Rich, that was just a giant step in competition for him. Like, just be a giant step. Where was he ranked before all of that happened? Either of you guys know? I think he was 13. Wow, that seems odd that he would get the number it, one guy. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think he was, I don't think he was in the top 10 yet, actually. Was there a reason for that? Did, did, did he step in for somebody, or I don't recall? Um... It had. I. I think there had been express interest by John Jones that he wanted to fight Manoa, and I mean, John Jones has that seemingness where he does kind of pick his opponents. Yeah. And I yeah. think. Yeah, I think that the step was. Well, yeah, you can fight Manoa, but he's got to beat Gustafson. So I think that's how that all got set up. To be honest with you. Yeah, I think the only reason they're fast tracking this is because he's a British fighter. Yeah. Well, yeah. they need the fans over there, that fan base. I mean, the shows that they have in England, they support their fans wholeheartedly, but it's just a different level of competition when they have to face Brazilian or American fighters. Yeah, yeah and I really didn't care for that production quality of that event. It's like, Wasn't for God's it sake, they had, they had the volume of the crowd so loud you couldn't even hear what the color commentary guys were saying. I thought it was really bizarre, actually, the way they, they presented that. Um, it, it was just very different from anything I had seen before with the UFC. Yeah, I felt like I was watching a soccer game with the way they had it, the audio mixed on that. Oh, God. That, Horrible. That's the funny thing, because that was what I thought, Rich. I thought maybe, you know how with the giant expansion the UFC has had in the last two years, my belief with this is, is that they're actually catering to markets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Mano, I just looked it up, it was ranked 11th, so. 11th, okay, yeah. Yeah, I still don't think it was warranted, but yeah, obviously he wasn't up for the challenge. And I'm just happy to see Gustafson gets like is slated to get the winner of Teixeira Jones. Oh yeah, he even said so before happy. the fight. Yeah, he even said before the fight took place he was looking to make a statement and end the fight early, and he did yeah. in fact do that. Yeah, that was um, 
I mean, it, it, it's exactly as I thought it would unfold, except it happened a few minutes later than what I had predicted. So, I forget what you called. What did you call? First round uh, KO for oh, Gustafson. Yeah. yeah. That well, you know, it was a tough card to pick because the one thing I always think is when you get people coming from all different countries. They had on the main card, they only had one fighter that was actually from the UK. Then there's like a Russian, an Icelandic guy, a Swedish guy, a couple Americans. So I, I always think, I, I would have to think jet lag and travel and that kind of crap would actually play into factor. Yeah, I agree with you too because I know that uh, DFW said on the Tough show, uh, Australia versus Canada, he goes, oh, I don't care where you're from. If you're good, you'll beat the guy. But you know, when the guys are flying in from Australia to Canada, and they're Absolutely. fighting in Canada, they got to acclimate to the time change and everything. Yeah, and it takes the body like a, probably around three weeks before you're. It, I mean, if you do that big a move, it, it's about three weeks before you're actually just acclimated to the time. And then with your body getting used to the new environment, like especially water, food, whatever. Yeah. I mean, that that can be an additional amount of time just for you, for you just to feel normal in your new environment. I guess. Yeah, I agree. And uh, we didn't actually do a prediction show for this one because uh, it was on Fight Pass. So we're probably not going to be doing Fight Pass predictions. I mean, we can always do them if we want, yeah. but uh, not everybody is going to get to see the fights maybe until the next day. Yeah, that's why I, I missed uh, a lot of the Jimmy Manoa fights is because they were doing them on Fuel. Two of his fights were on Fuel, and... Uh, me and my brother usually, I mean, he might have watched them, but when they were putting the fights on fuel, they weren't in HD, so it was, uh, it, if, you, if you've if you seen it in HD and you've seen it not in HD, the fights look shitty. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand when they put the fights on fuel because then I have to blow up the screen because when they're not in HD, it doesn't fill the picture. Then exactly. You gotta, then you got to blow up the picture, and then it's all distorted and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I never... <laughs> I never cared about the cards that that they had on fuel, so I never really watched them. I mean, they might have been good good cards, but I mean, without it being an HD, it just takes a lot away from it, doesn't it? Oh yeah, because we watch it on like a 42 inch screen in his in his living room, and it you can tell the difference. It just it, it looks like crap yeah. when it's in HD. You can see Chael Sonnen's back knee like real bad. Yeah, yeah. I have a 65 inch. Big screen TV, and uh, that used to be my favorite thing to watch HD fights on that big screen. But uh, we had an electrical storm down here, blew up my TV, so now I'm watching on a little tiny 32 inch <laughs> screen. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I think uh, Fox Sports 2, I don't know if they, they post, if they show anything in HD either. There's another one that they. No, Fox they Sports been... 2, they didn't upgrade it, they left it as a. The digital network. Uh, you know, I mean, <clears throat> these fights, you, you, if they're not in HD, it's just not the same. Yeah, it's not. I mean, because you get so spoiled once you have that HD and you're looking at it on mm -hmm. a big screen. Then, like I said, in my case, where I went from a 65 inch screen down to a 32 inch screen, and then you got, you know, that digital, you know, shadow box on the screen and you blow that up, it's not only a much smaller screen, but it's all distorted from the digital. Well, thank God Fight Pass is HD. So. Well, I'm not going to be getting Fight Pass. I'm not going to... I mean, again, we've, we've spoken about this before, but I've already got to pay to get those upper levels for Fox Sports 1 and Fox mm -hmm. Sports 2. So I'm not really crazy about spending another 10 bucks a month and then 50 bucks for pay-per-views. It's like, you know, what you know, what do they want from you? They, you know, they, they might as well ask next for your first child, you know? Yeah, yeah and then them showing tough Brazil on it. I mean, I, I'm paying for Fight Pass uh, for this month. Uh, I don't know about next month. You know, it it depends on how the season of tough goes out and seeing the schedule coming up. But it, you know, other than having the library at, at your disposal, that you know, which I actually have been watching some old Fedor fights. Um, Ten dollars a month. You know, it's 120 dollars a year. I mean, Netflix is cheaper than that, <laughs> yeah. you know? And plus, I can't stand watching it on a, a computer. I really hate watching fights on a computer. Uh, luckily, I've got uh, a graphics card to where I'm actually watching it on my TV, using my TV as a monitor, so... Yeah, I, 
Yeah, I had that on my big screen, but on the little screen, it doesn't even make sense to do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't watch it on the, my computer monitor. Otherwise, it, I, I wish they would come up with an app for the PS4. You know, for it. I mean, they've got UFC TV on. I believe it's Xbox. I've got a 360, and I, but they don't have Fight Pass on it. It's, it's kind of one of those things. It's like if you're gonna charge ten dollars, at least put out apps to where you can watch it on other things other than your computer. Yeah. It, it's still. Fight Pass has got a long way to go. Yeah. Any more comments on that one before we move on? Nah, I missed missed a lot of it, but <laughs> it, it was it was a good fight to to see uh, Gustafson uh, destroy a guy, and I loved watching him uh, call out John Jones. Okay, we'll speak more about that later on in the show, but exactly. It just seems kind of odd that you know he's going to try to make some sort of excuse. I'm going to guess to try to get out of this fight because he took the fight with with Glover to actually, I think, get out of fighting the rematch with the mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> exactly. Okay, any more from you, David? No, no, that's that's good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Melvin Galar versus Michael Johnson. I thought this one wasn't quite as bad as some MMA fans made it out to be. I heard lots of talk in the MMA world after the fight was over about how poorly Galar performed. But in round one, Gillard nearly dropped Johnson with a solid right directly on the chin of Johnson in the last minute of the round. And I thought uh, Gillard fought a, a smart fight in round one, but apparently Johnson didn't care for that style, and he wanted to stand flat-footed and bang. Um, but I, I thought it was a good fight overall, and I scored the fight 29-28 Johnson. Ultimately, Johnson won by unanimous decision with the scorecards reading 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28. Uh, how did you guys score that one, and what are your comments? Yeah, yeah I, go ahead, David. Okay, yeah, I scored it exactly, and um, I thought, yeah, Gallard looked sharp in the first round, and it looked like it was going to be one of those epic battles, and then he seemed like he was just a little out of his element and seemed really gassed, almost um, like he, I mean, he was still in there to fight, but it just seemed like he couldn't put anything together, like he was almost just too tired or... Um, some of the strikes and some of the combos that Johnson had put together had put a big effect on him. Yeah, I the the this was one of the the fights I really wanted to see on the card. And other than the first, and even in the first, uh, I I agree with with uh, what people were saying on Twitter and other social media outlets. Is Gillard just he Melvin was not was not engaging enough. He he was staying back too much. Um, when he was throwing, yeah, he's, he connected here and there, but, you know, you if you look at Johnson's output compared to Gillard's, I mean, you expected two guys that are known for their stand-up to be trading punches like crazy, and it, it it was mainly Johnson doing doing all of the peppering of of shots, and Gillard pretty much just, uh, he he just didn't look like he was there. He... He was looking like he was, you know, uh, looking for the one the one punch knockout the entire fight. And I mean, with a guy like Johnson, you can't do that. You can't you can't let a guy repeatedly score on you like that. And and, and especially in the judges' eyes, you in a fight where you expect fireworks, you can't you. You you feel let down when only one guy is putting out. It, to me, it it wasn't that great of a fight. Uh, I loved seeing that Johnson won since he's uh, from St. Louis, and I I, I think Johnson's really really uh, starting to to uh, find his find his way in the UFC. And I expect expect him to to really uh, keep climbing. I don't know, man. I don't know if I agree with that assessment because I, I really don't think Gillard did that bad. I thought he was doing the right thing. He was clearly frustrating Johnson by, you know, dodging and moving. And uh, I don't know. I thought round one was a great round. That You know, I thought it could have gone to either, either fighter. But like I said, I, you know, I gave round one to uh, Gillard 10-9. And then uh, in round two, Johnson continued to be frustrated with Gillard's game plan. And it was obvious because he kept throwing his hands up in frustration and even though round two was another close round until the final minute, um, I 
I gave round two to Johnson, and then round three pretty much started out the same way, but it wasn't nearly as close as rounds one or two, and it, three was clearly Johnson's round, and that was the round that won the fight for him, but I, I really didn't see Gallard not performing and not delivering. I thought he, I thought he, he had a game plan, you know, stick and move and do the best that he could yeah. to avoid taking shots, but... Uh, yeah, he, he, he wanted... Was, he was getting out outstruck like two or three to one. He he was not engaging enough. Well, in the third, clearly. Yeah. yeah. He and wanted, even in the second, he wasn't. I think just from like watching the fight, I mean, you Gallard to me was he his game plan was going to be to counter box and catch him coming in, and he just he wasn't effective doing it. Johnson had too good have movement coming in and. Basically, yeah. that nulled Gallard's game because it, it, to me, I mean, knowing boxing and following boxing, I, I had a friend that boxed for four years. Used to hang out with him at the gym, and just from that, it looked like Gallard was just he was absolutely setting it up to catch uh, Johnson coming in with like a big hook or uppercut. Yeah, that's what he set was. him on the canvas. But that, yeah, that's, that's what, exactly what it looked like to me. Yeah, and that's what he was looking for. But I yeah. didn't think I didn't think he looked bad. No, uh, no, me neither. Yeah. Me neither. I just thought I thought. Like I was saying about some of the fighters not traveling as well, it almost looked like he was a maybe a little bit more fatigued than he should have because I've never seen Melvin Gillard that lackadaisical, ever. Yeah, like it, exactly. Like, that's that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing is why why people see it that way is because they're so used to to Gillard engaging, you know, and he just he was he was trying to counter it and. And Johnson was actually the one getting the better counters. And, you know, he had that left straight or whatever. Or, I forget, he's a uh, uh, southpaw. Yeah, so a southpaw against an orthodox. It, that that always makes for an interesting matchup too. But, yeah, Johnson Johnson was one getting the better, better of the exchanges as well as the countering. Gillard, to me, he just, he did not look like himself and... I guess that's why a lot of people wanting, especially since Gillard has not been uh, winning his fights as of late. Yeah. Some people are actually wondering if he's going to be cut. I don't think he should be cut. I think yeah. uh, he needs to to uh, come out and, and win his next fight. That's for sure. Yeah, I was going to mention that same thing. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that outcome for Gillard because now he's 5-2-1 in his last eight fights. and. You know, maybe that will be his last fight in the UFC because uh, definitely when you look at his win and loss column, he's got a lot more red than he does green. Yeah. I, I think he needs a new camp. My, that's my opinion. I think he has to change camps. Who's who is he training with? Um, just let me double check. I, I would like my I would like to see him with um, um, the uh, alpha males, but I. I Oh, who's it? David? Yeah, he's with American you, Top Team. Yeah, American Top Team. But I don't think, um, I don't know if he's getting the attention he deserves as as the like for the athlete that he is. Because I mean, I see so much potential in him, and then for him to get what it was three fights in a row, he got rear naked choked. How could his camp let that? Like, how could they not prepare him for that? That to me is ridiculous. He's always so, been susceptible to the submissions. Um. Yeah. But th but then that's also reflected on on the camp that you're with and the people you're training with. If they can't get you prepared to defend against something that you're known for getting caught in, did you I say think the last three fights were by rear naked choke? Lost? Uh, no, I think he lost like three in a row with rear naked choke. Actually, um, uh, Jim Miller was, back in yeah. 2012, January 2012, he lost by rear naked choke. Um, Joe Lauzon. And then Lauzon. Yep, before that. Yeah. That was two in a row. Two in a row, okay. Yeah, yeah I that, just... That was uh, October 2011 and January 2012. I just think having a top-tier fighter that has that kind of athleticism, I think that that's something that his uh, camp and his training partners should be able to prepare him for. And I, I think that he should be with a... I think he should consider going to a different camp, maybe. Yeah, well, you know, American Top Team is a pretty good camp, but yeah, maybe yeah. you're right. Maybe he needs to go elsewhere. It, yeah, sometimes it's not like I mean, yeah, American Top Team, great camp, but sometimes it's not necessarily a fighter's fit, or it it could be just um, the wrong thing for an individual, not anything 
um, to take away from how good their team is, but it might not just be the right fit. I, I thought it was a good fight in any event. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, for the expectation, I, it might have been a good fight uh, if if it wasn't the the two fighters that it was. But uh, the expectations for the fight, uh, yeah, I was definitely let, let down. Okay. Any more comments on that one before we move on? Um, yeah, actually, when I and just to kind of um, even just get there was uh, the betting lines and some of the predictions for the uh, Gallard um, Johnson fight. People had picked decision, which I, I think when the fans were looking at it, I think fans ex expected the explosive um, fight that it was gonna like that they wanted, where someone was gonna end up on the canvas. Um, but it seemed like a lot of the people that were actually doing the um, predictions for that had picked it for a decision. So. You know, Johnson I even mentioned odd. in the post-fight interview that he was expecting, you know, to be a stand and bang type of a fight because mm -hmm. he said something post-fight about uh, how Galar did a bunch of shit talking, and he wasn't expecting him to run from him, and I didn't see him running from him. No. But, no. Yeah. No. All right. Yeah, Go ahead. I definitely agree with you there. He wasn't running from him. He was just he was trying to implement that counter style of boxing, definitely, and yeah. catch him. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't see him running either. I, I, you know, just trying to be elusive like Machida is. Yeah, I, I hate when people say running, running from their opponent. You know, there are certain guys that are actually running from their <laughs> opponent. You know, Khalid I mean, Storms. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> right, but. No, there are examples. <laughs> but being a being a trying to counter that, that's not running from your opponent. No. I mean it, See, and I always thought that Johnson was an excellent counter puncher, so I thought that that's why they tried to set up like a game plan like that was because uh, any time I've ever seen someone come in against Johnson, he's got that sharp little left and right hook that he uses and he seems to be excellent as a counter boxer just naturally and I think that they were trying to take him out of his game plan and implement that or it, it just seemed it seemed different for Melvin not to actually go in and actually try to set him on his butt because that that's the Melvin Gallard I expect but then when, when I saw the game plan I'm like oh that's you know what that's not a bad idea because Melvin Gallard he or um, Michael Johnson he can strike when someone comes in so yeah I don't know. I don't know. I it didn't was make, a bizarre fight. Yeah, I didn't make any predictions for this one, but had I have made a prediction, I would have thought that somebody was going to get knocked the fuck out. But yeah, I would have. I would have thought that too. But you know, if you look at, at Johnson, you know, he's coming off wins against Lozon, who actually beat Gillard, and then Tebow, who Tebow is a little beast of himself. Johnson. You know, he's got a three-fight winning streak going, you know, and then putting Gillard on, on top of that. It, the dude is, is really starting to look good. I mean, early in his career, he wasn't wasn't looking as good. And ever since he's been training with the Black Zillions, I think he's he's really, really starting to to acclimate to to the UFC very well. And I, like I said, I, I can't wait to see who they put him up against next. Yeah, I know it really it does seem that way truly, Damon. Like he's really kind of taken into his own and um yeah, it just seems really comfortable now compared to like his first couple fights. You're right. Like it just seems like he's used to the business, he's go and just yeah, he does seem like he's really coming along. Yeah, cuz I when I first seen him, I I thought he wasn't going to do too well cuz his wrestling hasn't wasn't the best. But you know, he's 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 come come a long way. Yeah, he started out, his first UFC fight was at the uh, Ultimate Fighter 12 finale where he lost to Jonathan Brookins, who a lot of people thought was going to be a big thing in the UFC. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever happened to that character, he kind of just faded away, didn't he? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I think he's, uh, uh, I don't know if he's still with the UFC or not. Yeah, I can't recall if he was cut or not, but I do know that he, he actually did... Uh, take a couple of fights in the UFC and he was taking a lot of shots to the head. Yeah. Yeah, he he didn't didn't look the best. <laughs> I mean, he looked good on on uh 
the ultimate fighter, but since then he just hasn't really. Yeah, I was really hoping that he would do well in the UFC because I did like him in the ultimate fighter. Yeah. Yeah, he lost to uh, the decision, the unanimous decision to Eric Koch. He lost uh, to Charles Oliveira by submission, guillotine in two, and he lost to Dustin Poirier in his last fight. Wow. Yeah, but the guy he's December 2012 was the last yeah. time he fought. So the guys he's been facing uh, that he had faced were were top guys. They put him up against some t- stiff competition. Yeah, um, they did. I mean, but December 2012. That's a long time ago. So huh, who knows where yeah. he's at now if he hasn't fought since then? Yeah. Um, see, I, I guess he's going with legacy. Uh, I'm looking it up. Um, yeah. Yeah, Legacy. Uh, he's supposed to fight, uh, make his debut on March 21st at Legacy FC 29 against yeah. Cody Fuller. Well, that's probably a better scenario for him rather than the UFC because uh, yeah. he might have been able to handle the lower of the top 10 fellas, but he definitely was not doing well against anybody ranked in the top 10. No. But there's a lot of guys that, that aren't going to, <laughs> you know, his his opponents they gave him coming out of the, coming out of tough are pretty pretty hard uh hard guys to go against, you know. Yeah, they kind of fast tracked him way too soon, I think. Yeah, exactly. All right, any other comments on that one? No. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Brad Pickett versus Neil Siri. Uh, to me, this was an exciting fight, and on the feet, these two fighters were pretty evenly matched, but when the action went to the ground, Pickett clearly had the edge. Ultimately, Pickett won by unanimous decision with scorecards reading 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28. I actually thought this one was a great fight. What about you guys? Yeah, I thought this one should have been fight of the night. Um, I, I, I didn't know who Siri was before this fight, but I know who he is now. Um Man, he was he was really giving uh, Pickett one hell of a fight. Uh, I di- I don't care. I didn't care how it played out. Uh, I just knew that after this fight, that Siri would be on my radar of people to watch, fighters to watch, and it, it was an exciting fight. I like again and again. I said I'm surprised it wasn't fight of the night. I think they uh, gave Gustafson and. Uh, Menowa fight of the night, which really? I'll, I'll have to look back, but yeah, it, that that definitely should have should have gone to uh, to uh, um, Siri and, and Pickett. You know, Pickett Pickett he moved down in weight class, I believe, didn't he? I think he for did, yeah. Fight. And he he just hasn't been looking that great as of late. Well, <clears throat> I agree with you, Siri. Definitely will be somebody to watch, but he's got to do something about his ground game because he was just dominated on the ground by Pickett. Yeah. Yeah, but great fight, great fight. I thought um, I thought Pickett would be able to finish it when it went to the ground, submit him. But um, yeah, Siri. I mean, he held his own, and I think um, yeah, his stock definitely goes up for the showing that he put on Saturday night. So. Yeah, I uh, when I actually watched the fight, I scored the rounds, and uh, I I had round one clearly as Pickett's round. I scored that one 10-9 Pickett. Round two started with you know pretty much more of that same excitement on the feet, um, with both fighters banging straight away, and I actually had Siri winning that round after three minutes. But once the fight went to the ground again, Pickett dominated on the ground again, and he stole the round. So I scored round two, 10-9 for Pickett, and then round three also started out that same way. And uh, again, I had Siri winning the fight for the first two minutes before the fight went to the ground again, and uh, Pickett managed to keep the fight there for you know, a little over a minute and a half or so. And to me, it seemed like he took the lead in the round. And uh, when the action went back to defeat again, it seemed to be turning in favor of Siri. And then in the last 30 seconds, Pickett managed to get another takedown, and Although he didn't really dominate like he did earlier in the rounds, uh, I gave round three to Pickett as well, and I scored the fight 30-27 Pickett. How did you guys score it? 
Yeah, that's I, I didn't actually score that fight, um, but I I the way you scored it, that's pretty much how I saw it going down, definitely. Yeah, it could have it could have definitely been thirty twenty sevens, but I mean, it was so close. I mean, I could I could see him giving uh, Siri a round. I think maybe round one. Uh, it like I said, I mean, that's where you kind of want to see those ten tens because that round one was so close. I mean, I thought actually round two was closer because I actually had. Siri winning that round, <laughs> and it wasn't until I think it was like the last minute or two minutes where things kind of changed in direction. But one of the judges did score 29-28, so Siri did at least get one round from one of the judges. Yeah, on on the post fight awards, uh, the fight of the night was given to Gus and Manoa. For I don't um, understand that. How do you give yeah. fight of the night to a one round fight where the next round it was? Yeah, exactly. And Gus Gus actually took took home a performance of the night for the knockout, and the other uh, award was to Gunnar Nelson uh, for the 24 second submission. I still have a problem with that performance award. You already won fight of the night, and then you give him a performance award as well. I mean, the, I I can understand it. I mean, because there there have been there have been that that has happened before, and it. And it's been deserving of it, you know, because there have been third round knockouts. Well, performances you know, of that I could agree with, okay, for knocking out Manuel the way that he did. But come on, I don't, I the, don't agree with the fight of the night. Yeah. You know, the fight of the night should have gone to pick it and Siri. Siri, definitely. Well, uh, Gustafson certainly got set up to throw together an amazing training camp for Jones. Then, if he's walking away with an extra hundred grand, yeah, man. Yeah. So. And, he, yeah, he, he got his win. I don't know what he's making per fight, but he walked out with quite a nice chunk of change in that one. Yep. Any more comments on this one? I just I want to see uh, what Siri does now. Yeah, like I said, I think if he works on his ground game, because to me it looked like he had no ground game in that fight. Yeah, yeah. but, but you know, I'm, he hasn't really – I don't think he's had uh, – a uh, real, real training camp like a UFC a fighter can afford. I well, mean, he doesn't have the best of records either. I mean, they have pretty much the same type of experience, but again, you know, Pickett has fought better quality fighters, but the series um, record is 13 and 10. So. Yeah, but he's a brawler, and I, I love seeing brawlers. Any more comments, David? No, I'm good with that one. Okay. You, you covered it. Let's move on to the last fight on the main card, and that was Omari Akhmadov versus Gunnar Nelson. And I don't think many people expected that the 11-0 Nelson would uh, do anything but win that fight. Um, but Akhmadov, uh, he actually has some heavy hands, and uh, Nelson was also coming off that long layoff for that injury that he had. I don't recall what the injury was, but, yeah, the potential there for an upset was there because of those factors, but uh, Nelson simply stalked uh, Akhmedov down looking for an opening. When he found it, he landed a solid straight left shot, dropped him early in round one, and then Nelson uh, followed that up to the ground where he started looking for the submission. They were on the ground for a little bit. Uh, Nelson wound up in full mount and did a bit of pretty brutal ground and pound, throwing and landing quite a few of those vicious elbows. And uh, Nelson wound up getting a guillotine on the ground, rolled over, locked it in deep, and uh, Akhmadov quickly tapped to that choke. I thought Nelson looked great in his return after being out for almost a year. Um, and Nelson won by submission around one at four minutes and 36 seconds. What did you guys think? Go ahead, David. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with Nelson. Um, to come off, off an injury and a layoff, and to come in and actually perform to the level that he performed, it looked like he not he wasn't affected by anything. He seems to still be at the top of his game, and definitely I could see him actually, um, I could see him making a run for it. Definitely. Yeah, he, it didn't look like he missed a beat at all. Like he wasn't no. out for any length of time. It really did. Like he just looked phenomenal. And against, 
Akhmadov, and he's been hailed pretty high, I mean, by some critics and fight fans for having the heavy hands, and he's a hand-to-hand combat champ in Europe uh, several times over, all these all these accolades. Yeah, but he just did um, not look good on the ground either, and, no. and that seems to be the argument that people have with some of the Russian fighters, that great stand-up, great power, but usually when they go to the ground, they don't look so good. Yeah, the only one that I remember in... Um, as far as a Russian fighter being solid on the ground was Oleg Taktarov. He was uh, he had good submissions, but I haven't seen a good submission like a good Russian submission fighter lately. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, Akhmadov has uh, six wins by KO, four submissions, two decisions, but he's also lost by sub twice, counting that fight on Saturday. So. Yeah, no, know, uh, no. And all of his losses, those two were by submission, so. Who's, uh, who's that one Russian guy? He just fought. Um, God, they always have such uh, hard to pronounce names. Uh. <laughs> well, I struggle <laughs> the, with them myself. The blonde wig guy? The blonde wig guy. The guy what? that wears the blonde wig to the way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that might be him. Well. Uh, I'm trying to look him up on on the uh, USC website right now because I can't remember. His it's name. one of the Ovs. <laughs> yeah, I keep hearing people call him either Habib or Khabib. Khabib, I know. <laughs> and he's a hell of a fighter. You think they'd have his name sorted out by now? Yeah, because it's not only just you know the people that in the octagon and and in the event. It's like everybody is calling this guy something yeah. different. It's not completely. <laughs> Baga, ba, Ali Baga, oh, Baga Bagatino. Bagatino. Yeah. That right. dude has got, he's got phenomenal wrestling and grappling. No. He, he's definitely, um, definitely one of the the Russian standouts. But yeah, back back to the fight. Um, there there's our. Uh, some fights uh, where, where you'll call it an ass whooping, that was an ass whooping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he went, he won with the submission, but he could have clearly finished the guy. The those elbows, oh my god, that was brutal, and, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that that was definitely brutal. That was an ass whooping. I mean, it I feel bad was. for the other guy, to, you know, because he. You know, he goes in there to fight, and then he comes out looking like he has no clue what he's doing in the sport. You know, when he gets completely controlled by yeah. by Gunner. Well, that's like what that. threw me off because I expected a submission, but I didn't expect it to come that way with that brutal ground and pound with those elbows like that. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but man, he just worked him over and beat yeah. him up until he could, you know, get that submission. But <laughs> he, looked, right. he looked fantastic, man. No doubt about it. This guy's going to be a, a big star in the UFC. No, no question. Yeah, damn right. Definitely. Yeah, based 12 and on 0, twelve and zero with one draw. Yep. And based on skill sets, um, just with the, uh, um, it, it really seems there were really two mismatches on that card Saturday. Yeah. I mean. It really does. I don't think after actually seeing the way Manua performed against Gustafson, being in his hometown, him being able to see the O2 Arena from his home, um, yeah, that was it, a total mismatch. And then with oh, the, he was uh, beat to hell because after oh, the fight was over, he had no clue where he was. He didn't, and that's his home arena. Yep. <laughs> and then the Akhmadov and Nelson fight. I mean, it just seemed ridiculous. Like it seemed Nelson seemed on such a different level than Akhmadov. Like just uh, not even. I mean, uh, a little high school kid playing uh, hoops against Jordan. Yeah, that was Omari's first fight in the UFC, right? Yeah, he got schooled. That was a hell of a way to come and uh, get a yeah, greeting. Yeah. As your Welcome first fight. to the UFC. <laughs> I mean, they know, I mean, based on Gunnar Nelson's skill, they know how good and talented a fighter he was. I I think his return, I think they should have given him someone a little tougher, you know? I think they were probably going easy on him because uh, he was off for over a year. It was like almost 13 months, wasn't it? 13 months, yeah. But it was just, he, like we were saying, it's like he didn't skip a single beat. He came in there, boom, 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 fight done. I'm like, what the hell was that? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah but, it, was, it was a knee injury that he suffered from, right? But, yeah. Yeah, with all the that's what I thought. The, that's what I thought. Yeah, with all the fight cards that they're putting on now, though, I, I mean, it's probably kind of hard to to find a, a higher up opponent, you know, because there, there's so many people they've already got, uh, they've already have planned for other fights. So, you know, they they could have been going easy on Gunner just because it was a return fight, but you know, the the other guys got to make a debut somehow. Yeah. And had probably, he won, probably. that would have been a hell of a debut for him. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was probably a little bit too much for him to chew yeah. uh, <laughs> straight away into the UFC. They probably should, I did, have, I probably should have given though, him somebody a bit easier. That guy, like uh, Gunnar Nelson impressed me more than um, Gustafson. I yeah. will say that, definitely. Yeah, he looked good. And if you're going to give a long-round fight, fight of the night, a performance, that fight was even more impressive. <laughs> exactly. Well, Gunnar Nelson did he did get a performance of the night bonus for that. Oh, did he good? For the stuff, yeah. He clearly deserved it. Holy Toledo. No, that was great. Good for him. Good for him. All right, so uh, any more comments on that one before we move on? No. David? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, just recapping that one there. Nelson won by submission in round one at four thirty six. Okay. Any of the undercard fights you guys want to talk about real briefly? Uh, not really. Uh, there were some good ones. Uh, Barnett looked really good, uh, but uh, his opponent, you know, even though he's like six one, looked like a looked like a midget compared to Barnett. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see that one. How did that one go? I... Uh, TKO in the first. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, how how soon into the first? Uh, I'm wanting to say. What was it? Uh, UFC doesn't keep very good records. It seems. I guess it was uh, 25 seconds left into the into the round. Oh, so what did he do? Did he dominate and beat him the whole time through the round? Or? No, no. Nielsen Nielsen actually got in on him and and landed some shots. But uh, Barnett come back, came back and and hit him with it. Caught him with a head kick. Got through uh, Nielsen's guard, man. It, it clearly rocked him. And then Barnett, he, the combos he put together to end it was just, they, they were beautiful. I mean, he was landing every strike. It, he, he looked good, but, man, the dude's six six, And I, I believe they're, I think he's welterweight. 185. 185 middleweight. Six six though, you know, dude, <laughs> he's a big, he's a big dude. Yeah, and that was another guy who uh, had his first fight coming into the UFC. So I don't know if they were expecting him to be dominated like that, but I'm looking here. It was a TKO, head kick, and punches in round one at three twenty four. Three twenty four, yeah. The UFC site. Doesn't have the best, <laughs> the best uh, setup when when it comes back to looking at past past fights. I always have yeah. a problem with the UFC site. It always crashes my browser. <laughs> yeah, they they they've got some issues, but yeah, you would expect more from somebody a billion dollar company. Yeah. Well, that's three wins in a row in the UFC for. Uh... Or not, so he's off to a good start. Yeah, he's he's gonna be a contender. I mean, especially with his height and reach. That's just amazing. Six six, one hundred and eighty five pounds. Holy jeez. Yeah, like I said, man, Nielsen's like six one, and he looked like a midget to this guy. Yeah, I, I don't recall this guy. I do remember him from Tough, but I don't remember a whole lot about him. But I'm. Looking at his uh, fight record on Share Dog, uh, first fight was the Ultimate Fighter finale. Uh, that was the tough 17 season, won by decision, unanimous decision over Colin Hart. Then he fought Andrew Craig at UFC Fight Night 30. Uh, that was when Cheetah versus Munoz. And he won by rear naked choke at 212 in round two. And then last night he got the head kick and punches TKO at 324. So. 3-2-1, he's uh, 
Looks like he's stepping up his game, huh? Definitely. Yeah, yeah he looked. Yeah, he looked great. Yeah, when I had even seen him at uh, Munoz Machida, he looked really impressive as well too. Okay, any more comments on that one before we move on? Mm. All right, David. Well, thanks for showing up, buddy. Thanks for showing up, David. End Thank of the show. Time to say goodbye, folks. So go ahead and say goodbye. See you later, everyone. Off the fish. Have a great time, Thank you, guys. Have a good time, guys. All right, bye-bye. Take care, guys. Later.